Hello, it's Roger Bisbee here, and I'd like to talk to you about a development in home heating. Now, this is an Adam's One Penny heat pump that he's talked about on the Heat Geeks channel. It's a little bit more down to earth, a little bit easier. It's actually a story that was sent in by one of our viewers, so thanks very much for sending that. And what it is about is the Baltic countries, well, in particular Lithuania, who are deciding not to go for the heat pump option, but they're just going to go for a direct electric input heating, underfloor heating, which means running cables in the screed and letting the screed warm up and that way you heat the building. Before I go any further, I would like to say that this is only suitable for homes which achieve the very, very high insulation and draft proofing standard in Lithuania, which is A++. To achieve that, it's way above what we do for our building regulations in the UK. It's another level up from that. So it means that these homes take hardly any heat at all to heat them up. So that means your fuel bills are automatically a lot lower, whatever you go for. So what they're saying really is that rather than have all that technology pumps and all those moving parts and all those things that can break down or freeze up or leak harmful gases into the atmosphere what they're going to have is a very simple system where you just lay this cable let it warm up control it with some thermostats and you're using the floor as a thermal store it works very well indeed but of course it does rely on cheap electricity as well and they've got a very generous scheme in Lithuania where you produce excess electricity in the summer through your solar panels and you sell that into the grid and you can buy it back in the winter for a cheaper price than you would otherwise pay. In that way, they're acting as a kind of bank for you. I don't know what they use that electricity for because you would imagine that if everybody's producing electricity in the summer and it's not being required, what are the Lithuanians doing with it? Maybe they're selling it to us, who knows? The other thing is that they've got very, very generous grants from the government to allow this to happen. And it means that a lot of people in Lithuania can heat their house for about two, three hundred pounds a year as a opposed to our, what, nearly a thousand pounds a year for a three-bedroom semi-detached. Is that the route we should be going now? Should we abandon all this complicated technology which takes very skilled installers to fit and government grants and just go for something simple such as an electric cable under the floor? Now, I would just say that these systems already exist. We do have electric underfloor heating, but I call it tile warm-up because it doesn't really heat the room. It's a very, very expensive proposition to put enough of that heating cable into your floor to heat the room. My neighbour tried it, I tried to talk him out of it. He went against my advice, put it in after one winter. He was faced with a bill of a thousand pounds and he switched it off and he never switched it back on again. So if he'd gone for warm water, he would have been laughing. He would have been a lot better. He could have put that on his gas boiler or he could have got a heat pump, but he would have been a lot better off. So I would counsel against it in current circumstances where you don't have a well insulated house and you're not producing enough electricity from your solar panels and your battery system to run this and you'd need a lot you'd have to have a very large garden a very big roof or a field out the back where you could put solar panels to produce enough electricity to heat your house so don't rush into it people and just be assured that you can't do it with your average tile warm-up system it just won't produce enough heat so the upfront cost for this in Lithuania about ten thousand pounds for a hundred meter square house which is not too bad but the one thing about electricity is is that it is a hundred percent efficient in other words what you put in you get out you're getting one for one with direct electricity when you look at a heat pump which they say is 300 percent efficient if you're lucky you're getting three to one you're not creating energy you're moving heat from one area i.e the outdoors to the indoors so it's not a question of it it's sort of multiplying energy or doing anything else so the colder the weather the harder the heat pump's got to work and the less efficient it is so how do these Lithuanians get away with it? Well, the first thing is those well-insulated houses, they don't really need much heat. You could turn on a few light bulbs, turn on the telly. I mean, these massive, great televisions people have now, have you felt the heat coming off those? You could probably keep warm just with a few things like that going. Maybe the fan out the back of your computer is chucking out a bit of heat and you'd soon find that the house warmed up quite nicely, even without having the heating on. So we are talking about very small amounts of heat needed to keep pace with the heat loss from these buildings. And that is the key if you can cut down on the heat loss 
you can cut down on the heat input and that's the thing that's a kind of dangerous territory we're drifting into where people are saying that we don't really need very well insulated houses to run a heat pump well you kind of do if you want to get any money back on it if you want it to run efficiently then you definitely need to upgrade your insulation and your draft proofing now there is a problem with upgrading insulation is that there's a diminishing return on it the first 300 millimeters of insulation you get in may be okay but the second 300 millimeters you put in you're going to get a marginal return on that over a much longer period you could say that maybe the first 300 millimeters would pay for itself in say 20 years and a second 300 millimeters might take 50 years might take longer to get your money back is that a good idea or not i think the more insulation you put on the better i've got a body warmer on I've got a jumper on and we don't run our heating 24 7 like people with a heat pump do we turn it off at night when we go to bed and it comes on in the morning for a couple of hours then we go to work and then in the evening the heating comes on for a few hours four hours say and that warms the house up again obviously the house is losing heat during the day but it's not total heat loss it's losing it gently the warmer the house and the colder the outdoors the faster the heat loss is from one to the other to some extent if you're warming a house up and you're just letting that heat go outside and you're doing it when the house isn't occupied you're wasting heat there are studies which show that that heat loss and that cost isn't that great but it's still heat loss it's still heating a house that you don't need to be warm because you're not there there's a lot of debate to be had about this and I would welcome your comments below let's keep the debate going the catch is of course that you need a very generous government subsidy to make this work you need to have much cheaper electricity prices you need a generous refund system from the national grid and you also probably need a government grant to get it going and of course you need that very very well insulated home so it doesn't look to me like this system is going to come our way anytime soon but uh, we're used to that aren't we so as always dear viewer what do you think do you think that we're over complicating our heating system Systems with heat pumps and all these moving parts or do you think we ought to just go for, for something very very simple like an electric wire that heats up technology has been around for a long long time and if only we could get more renewable electricity at a cheaper price then maybe that would be the answer